Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. Welcome to the very last video of our Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to wrap up your quilt by putting that final binding on. I'm gonna be using the Creative Grids six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler that we've been using the whole time, a rotary cutter. I'm gonna use size 80 needles, a six and a half inch square ruler, which is gonna help us square up our corners our Fat Quarter Shop small ruler so that you can draw lines and join your binding. We've got our binding strips that we cut earlier in the series. We're gonna be using binding clips, a friction pen, and I like to use the black gold clover needles for binding, and just our regular pins. So let's get started. So we have our binding strips already cut, and I am going to take each of them and cut the selvage off, and I'm gonna line up the top of the ruler and cut off the edge so it's nice and straight. And then we're gonna take these to our sewing machine and we're gonna join them together into one long continuous piece. So to join your strips, you always wanna make sure you have right sides together. So I've got right side up. I'm gonna take the next strip and I'm gonna go right side down. So the right sides are now together. I'm gonna to pin twice, once at the top right and once at the bottom left. And you can see that I left a tiny bit that overhangs. And the reason I do that is so when I'm sewing, I can really eye where that corner intersection is in case the fabric shifts. I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner. And if you wanna make sure that it is going the right direction, you just flip it open and you know your line is the correct way. And I'm just gonna join all of these into one continuous line and then go to the sewing machine. So right side up, grab your next piece, right side down, they're now right sides together. Pin twice. And just by having this peek out, it really just helps me. Nothing gets, um, nothing gets out of place when you're putting your binding together. And I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. So when I'm sewing, I would usually use a thread that matches my fabric, and I do that on all of my binding. For today, we're gonna use a navy so that you can see my stitching. But again, you would normally use a color that matches, and I like to use RFL 50 weight. I'm going to use an open toe foot, and I'm just gonna stitch directly on the line with a 2.0 stitch length. And see, as you're stitching, the reason I let this lip over a little bit is you want to sew directly to that point where it intersects. So if your line gets a little bit off, just go straight to this little intersection. And I'm going to chain piece and just keep adding all together and then we'll clip them apart to save time. Thank you. 
And now we're gonna go clip these apart and press them. So I have these all chained together. I'm gonna first just clip them apart. And then to cut them, I'm going to just cut up a little bit and we're just gonna trim a quarter inch away on all of them. It doesn't have to be exact, but the only, you can go this way and then just cut the little tip off or you can just cut up and then around. And again, this doesn't have to be accurate we just want to leave a quarter inch approximately. And then when you are ironing these, it's best to press open because you're gonna have a lot of bulk in that intersection. So first I like to set my seam, press to one side, and then press open. If you're not comfortable pressing open, you can press to one side, and then as you progress, you can press open on a future quilt. And as I am ironing, I'm also going to iron out the creases that are from the center of the bolt. So I do that as I go. So press, and so I'm gonna do that with all of the remainder of these. And again, you would normally use aqua thread. We're just using navy today so you can see our stitches. So now you have a big, long, continuous piece, and we are going to put wrong sides together, and we're gonna be very careful to keep this really lined up as you go, and we're just gonna press. When I'm pressing, I'm just gonna go up and down, and I just go really nice and slow, and I do this for the entire piece. So you're just going to do this the entire way. And if you go up and down rather than side to side, your fabric will not move and it will stay more in place. And you want to give it a little bit of a press so you get a really nice crease because on the crease you're going to be putting stitches in later. So we're just going to do the whole line. And it does take a little bit of time to put on a movie watch TV. And as you get to one of these intersections where everything goes across, you just want to make sure everything lines up. So now we have all of our binding ready to go. I'm gonna set it aside. I've got my quilt top and I do my binding a little bit different than other people. So I'm gonna show you the Kimberly way. I take a Creative Grids ruler and I use the side that has the strong dotted line at the quarter inch line. And I am going to cut the quilt a quarter inch away from where my quilt ended. 
and I just follow I don't I just follow the quilt exactly like it is so for example it gets a little curvy here see how it gets a little curvy that's okay I just cut I just follow the line so I just cut and when I get to that curve let's see I'm gonna look I'm just gonna move my quilt like this and that makes it straight so it was curvy and I'm gonna put my ruler down join it here and see how it's curvy I just keep that ruler taut and pull my quilt to make it straight and when it is quilted you will never know there was a curve there so you just straighten it that way you're still cutting a quarter inch away And then I'm just going to rotate. I'm going to cut all four sides the same way. And then I'm going to show you a little trick for your corners. And then we're going to attach for binding. Binding is actually one of my very favorite parts of making a quilt. So when I get to this next edge, I'm going to do the same thing, quarter inch away. And if a little bit is poking under, I just pull it. And we're just cutting a quarter inch away. The reason I do, the reason I leave the quarter inch is because I, I want my batting to really fill up that binding so I don't have flat binding. I really like my binding to be nice and full. So I'll show you how it looks at the end. So when I send my quilt to a long armor, if I send it, I tell them not to trim my quilt because I like to trim it myself and I like to trim a quarter inch away. And then I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can make your corners be really square. So we have it all trimmed. So you can see I've cut a quarter inch away and there's your backing. And what I'm gonna do is on each corner, I'm just gonna take a Creative Grids six and a half inch square ruler. You can use any ruler you like and I'm gonna draw a line where it's square and that way when I start adding my binding, I follow this line so that my quilt squares up in the corner. So you can see that to square it up, I need to kind of go in a little bit here. So I'm gonna follow this black line when I'm attaching my binding instead of the fabric. And this one looks pretty square. This one doesn't need any adjustment. But if anything's off a little bit, I will just draw that line. That one looks square. And this one looks like maybe I could go in a little bit there. So I'm just gonna follow these lines so that my, my corners are nice and square. And then I like to start my binding on the very bottom. So this is the bottom edge of the quilt. And I like to just leave a gap, maybe 10 to 12 inches and so what we'll do is I'm just going to kind of start about right here and I'm going to leave about a 10 inch gap 
So I have lots of room and we're just gonna start stitching and I'm gonna show you at the sewing machine how you go um, to each corner, how you rotate each corner, how you go all the way around and how you join. So I've left about a 10 inch tail and I'm gonna start where I put my pin in. I am lining up my binding on the edge of the quilt and I'm leaving this quarter inch gap of batting. I'm not sewing on that. I'm gonna put the edge of my walking foot on this piece. A walking foot comes with most sewing machines and it is going to sandwich everything and it is going to not just move on the bottom, it's gonna move on the top. So if you have something really thick, it's gonna move it through. So I'm just gonna start stitching. I'm using maybe a 3.0 stitch length. Stitching all the way. And I'm just lining up the binding as I go. I don't pin or anything, I just line it up as I go. Now when I get towards the edge, I want to stop a quarter inch away from the quilt top. Ignore all of this batting out here. So this is the edge of my quilt top, right here. And I wanna be a quarter inch away, so I put a little ruler and mark it with my friction pin that's gonna go away later with heat. And I'm gonna stitch to the quarter inch mark, leave my needle down. Now you do not want to cut your thread here or your stitches will come out. I'm going to pull my foot up, rotate, and I'm just going to sew straight off at a diagonal. Cut my thread. And I'm going to pull this and we are going to try to make 45 degree angle. So I'm going to go like this. And now you can see that this is not lining up. This edge right here is not exactly lined up with the quilt top. So that means I didn't sew enough. So I need to do one more stitch. So I'm gonna start over. So this time we're gonna go a little bit farther and pivot. And again, my I'm stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt top. And I'm gonna fold my binding back. And you can see now that my binding is 100% lined up with my quilt top. So if you take a ruler, it should be flat all the way. I like to crease it a little bit and then keep it in place with your fingers. Keep your fingers there. Pull your binding back. You want it to be lined up right at the top and right at the edge. And I like to put a little pin so it stays in place. So you should have a straight edge right here for this to come out nice and straight on the edge. You're gonna start stitching before you get to the binding. So you can just stitch a little bit on that batting, keeping that in place. And you can see right here that I drew this line with my friction pin, which means I want to line up with the line. So my quilt will be a little bit more square. And you're just gonna line up your binding with the edge of your quilt top and stitch all the way to the next corner.
And you can see as I'm going, I'm just aligning my binding as I go. Now I'm getting close to the edge. So again, I'm gonna put a mark a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt top. Draw a line across, and that is where I'm going to stop and pivot. And you can see that somehow the hit right in the corner. And that happens, and I'm okay with that, and it's totally fine, it'll still look fine. So I'm gonna go straight to where I drew the line. Turn the quilt, sew off of your quilt. You're gonna pull your binding back. It makes a perfect line. You're gonna pull this back. Make sure the top is a straight line. Put one pin in start stitching on your batting and stitch all the way down to the next corner now if you're if this is crooked up here when you get to the end your quilt will have a funny looking corner so that's why it's important for it to be straight there When I'm adding the binding, I do like to have my needle down. Keeps it in place a little bit better because you're going to move and stop a lot. Again, we're at another corner, so we're gonna just make a mark a quarter inch away from the quilt top. We're gonna sew to that line and sew off diagonally. The reason I sew diagonally this way is because that is how your fold goes, and it makes it lie flatter. If you, if you stopped your stitch right there, when you pulled this back, your stitches would come out. So again, we're gonna fold, and we're gonna see that's not exactly a straight line. So I'm off about an eighth of an inch, so I'm gonna stitch again and just stitch a little bit longer to that corner. So we're going to try that again. 45 degree line. Now it is a straight line. Pull it back. nice and square put a pin and sew down to the next corner
to draw a line a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt top. Sew to that line and pivot. We are on our last row that makes a straight line pull back now see if you put it this way that would not look good in the end you you're, it wouldn't be straight so you want it to be just like this so you're wanting a straight line here and a straight line here and that is how your corners will come out really pretty and that took me a long time to learn So now we're on our last line and we are going to stitch all the way until about 10 to 12 inches before your start. Now we have this about 10 inch gap. We're gonna go to the cutting table and we're gonna figure out how we're gonna join these. So I left a gap about 10 to 12 inches. I'm gonna lay the first one down flat. I'm just gonna cut it off a little bit so it can lay flat. I'm gonna put the other one on top and it's laying flat. Now remember when we first cut this binding, it's two and a half inches wide. So which, whatever size you originally cut your binding is the size that you're looking for here. We're gonna find the center and I'm gonna trim this bottom one. So first I'll trim this, kind of in the center just so you have room to play. So we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna put the other side right on top and whatever you cut your binding at is the size that you're gonna measure. So I'm gonna take this ruler, it's actually the exact size of the cut binding. So you can see this is the exact same size. You're gonna measure over from right where you cut this one, the cut size, right here. So if you cut your binding two inches, you would measure two inches. We cut ours two and a half, so we're gonna measure two and a half over, and we're gonna trim right here. So we have, and it can go either way. As long as this distance right here between the two is the size you cut your binding, which was two and a half. Now we need to join them. So to join them, you just have to think in your mind how it's gonna go. And so they're gonna be joined right here. And I like to pin this in place and I kind of visualize it in my head, how it's going to go before I get to the sewing machine. And I'll put in a wonder clip to help get it out of the way in a second, but I like to visualize it. So you can see that I'm joining these together. And if I draw a line from here to here, and so it's gonna go just like this. So I visually figure that out in my head before. So get this. Pinned. I like to put a lot of pins because as you're, there's so much bulk here, it'll move a little bit. So I'm gonna put a lot of pins. I have these two fabrics right sides together. I'm going to grab a wonder clip. And what I'm gonna do with this quilt is I'm gonna bunch it up so that when I get to the sewing machine, I've got some room to move. Now I need to sew from corner to corner so I'm gonna draw a line before I get to the sewing machine so that helps me. 
And I know it kind of looks wonky, but I feel like if you do it this way, you can visualize and make sure it works before you get to your sewing machine. So I'm a visual person, so I really kind of visualize, make sure it's gonna work before I go, because I have messed this up several times. So now all we have to do is go sew from point to point, and we'll come right back. So I'm gonna get this bulk out of my way. I'm gonna leave the walking foot on just because I need it on for the next step and I don't wanna switch that out. So as I'm doing binding, I leave my walking foot on, but I'm gonna lower back down to a 2.0 stitch length, which I've already done, and we're gonna sew from point to point. And there's just a lot of bulk, so you kinda of have to just move stuff around so that you can really get this in here. It's not always easy. And you could always change your foot if you want to, but I never do. And so now we're gonna go press. So now before I iron it, I'm gonna make sure it works. So it does, it works. Now I need to trim this a quarter inch away. I'm just gonna trim a quarter inch away. And we definitely want this to be pressed open. So I'm just gonna press from the back. Finger press and then just press from the back. And then we're going to press this down, make sure it's nice and flat. And I like to put some pins in here just because sometimes you have to finagle it a little bit to get it to fit. And we're just going to go back to the sewing machine with our walking foot on and go back to a 3.5 stitch length. And we're gonna start stitching over the previous stitches. So I'll start here, go all the way down, and then go over my previous stitches, and that's gonna anchor that down. So again, I'm going over my previous stitches. and everything is secure. So now we're gonna go iron. So the next thing I'm gonna do is in the corner, I'm gonna cut the corners. I'm gonna cut a little triangle off. Make sure you don't go into your fabric at all. This is going to help on the next step when you're hand binding that there's not too much bulk in those corners. So that's the first thing I do is cut these little triangles off. So there you go, little triangles just to get a little bit of that fabric off. And then, this is something unique that I also do is I'm going to press. I'm press this out. It's gonna make it nice and crisp on the front. And it's gonna make that binding go down easier on the back. This is a step that a lot of people don't do. So you can try it, and if you like it, you can do it, and if you don't, you don't have to do it. So we're back all the way to the beginning where we started. And what I like to do now is I like to wonder clip the entire quilt. So wonder clips hold it on the back. And you can see that if you pull if you pull this binding back, it's going to join right where your stitches are on the sewing machine and you have got a nice fat binding and there's no 
there's no weakness in it. That's why I leave that batting on. And the way that I do my Wonder Clips is I literally just put them on. When I put them on, I don't line it up. I just throw them on. I Wonder Clip the entire quilt at one time, even if it's a king size quilt. Actually, my kids do it for me, but I will do the whole quilt. Now, it does make the quilt very heavy. Um, so you can just do a little bit at a time, do whatever works for you. And I'm gonna, just the corners, you just keep going. You just ignore the corners, but see the corners coming out really nice. And then I prefer to hand quilt the back. And I prefer to hand stitch the binding down on the back. You can machine bind if you're interested in that. We have some videos, but I really like to hand bind. It's one of my favorite things to do. I am going to show you how to do that right after I get all of this Wonder Clips down. And I'm doing this every two or three inches, probably three inches. Another box, and I'm just gonna keep adding these wonder clips. And now we're gonna hand stitch this down. So I like to use Clover Black Gold Needles and um, I just get a package of size nine to 12. I'll use any of the sizes. So when I open it, I'll probably just pick one, any of them that they don't, the size doesn't matter to me. But what I like about them is they bend a little bit. So as you're stitching, they will bend and it will help you get into the groove. So I like to take from my spool, maybe 20 inches. Where you cut your thread is where you knot it. So when it comes off of your spool, this is where I cut it, I'm gonna knot it. I'm gonna lick my finger, put a circle around, push, and I have a little knot. It really doesn't matter what kind of knot you do. Any, any way you make a knot will be fine. I'm gonna thread my needle. And again, we would normally be using aqua thread, but I want you to be able to see the stitches. So to start, I'm gonna start on a corner so that you can see how to do the corner. I'm gonna put the needle in underneath back here, and I'm gonna come up right at that stitch line. I'm gonna pull this through and see my knot is going to be hidden. I'm gonna use my thumb on my left side, on my left hand, to hold it down as I stitch. I stitch from right to left. Some people go the opposite way. I put my needle in right on the other side of my machine stitch. I go about an eighth of an inch and I come up 
right in the very edge of that fold. I pull up and you can see my thumb stays there to keep it in place. And I keep doing the same thing. I go back down into where I just came up an eighth of an inch, come up right in that fold. So I'm making really small stitches and I have my thumb very tight on there. And you can see that as I'm stitching, I'm working right on this navy stitch. So I'm not going too far away from it. I'm just stitching right on the other side of it. That way your binding lays the same exact distance from the front, from the edge on the front and the back. And so you can see how it looks on the front and on the back. And because my stitches are so tiny, even though I'm using navy, you can hardly see it. It's just sinking right in there. That RFL 50 weight stays in there really nice. And I only use one thickness of thread. I don't double it up. And any kind of threads you have, you'll just kind of tuck them in here. And you can see that batting that I left, it just fills up the spot. So I'm just going to keep going, keeping my thumb right on there. And I take my time. I don't rush doing binding because I enjoy it so much. So my stitches there are some, maybe three eighths of an inch apart. And I'm just going through the back. And every now and then I'll look to the front to make sure that I, my thread has not gone through to the front because sometimes it does and if it does, I'll pull it out. So I'm just making sure that this just stays right on the back. And as I get to a wonder clip I'll just take it off and the corners are not as hard as you think I used to think they were a lot harder than they really are I would overthink it so I'm gonna stitch right to the edge so where you see this intersection you can see the intersection right here I'm gonna stitch right to here and stop And I don't even look at the front because I know that because of the way I did it by making the 45 degree angle it's going to be pretty. So I'm going all the way to that point right there. So I've stitched to that point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch one more time right in that point. So I'm gonna put my needle back in the same stitch and come back up the same stitch. And that just kind of anchors it. And you can see on the front, I've got a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna rotate slightly so I can keep going. I'm gonna put a wonder clip right here Using my thumb, I'm gonna just kind of finagle it so that I get that same exact as the front. So I just put it right there and you can see that point. It's hard to see without my finger, but so I'm just making that same exact and I'm gonna put my needle right back in, right at the point and go back through that same stitch and just keep going. And sometimes it gets a little hard and that looks nice and pretty and you just keep going to the next corner 
So the corners are super easy. You just want to do an anchor stitch so that you anchor it. And an anchor stitch, to me, that just means you're going to just stitch twice in the same spot. And it's probably not really an anchor stitch. I'm just calling it that. And hand, hand binding, I think, makes your quilt look really nice and pretty. Gives that finishing touch. So you're just gonna go all the way around the edge. And then when we get to the very end, I'm gonna show you how you join it all together. You do all the corners exactly the same. So I've been stitching and now I'm getting a little bit short. So I'm gonna show you how you end. So I'm gonna do a stitch, go back in to the same place I just stopped, pull my needle back through so it's back in this binding area that you're not gonna see. Pull it taut so it's taut. It's really tight. Put my finger there. I'm just gonna create a knot. I'm gonna put a loop, pull it, pull another, pull it through a loop, and cut. So it's hidden. You're never you're never gonna see that. So I'm going to start again. I'll show you how you start again. Get your thread. Where you cut your thread is where you're going to knot it. So just any kind of knot. Thread your needle. These needles have a little small eye. So now I'm going to put my needle in. I'm going to scoot it underneath here. Go to the stitch previous to the one I ended. Push it through and come up. Now your knot is hidden. Go back to where you, so you're just doing another stitch right where you had your ending stitch and you're just gonna go over and just keep going. And you never knew where you started and you stopped because you're just going over previous stitches and you're hiding everything in this area. And since we added that batting, you've got more area and there to hide stuff. And you're just gonna go all the way around to the very end. So now we have done the hand quilting all the way around the edge and I'm just gonna show you how you join to where you started. And I'm just doing the same stitches. And since it is navy, you can really see the stitches, but if you used aqua you wouldn't be able to see that Okay, so we're getting kind of close to the beginning. You can see we've just got an inch or two, and you're just gonna stitch just like you've been stitching the entire time. Nothing different. And you can see as you go, you'll get a little bit faster. If it's more comfortable for you, you could always stitch from left to right. I just happen to stitch this way. So you're just going to keep stitching. And you're just going to get to where your previous stitches are. And I just stitch about three more stitches over. So I'm just stitching right on top of my previous stitches. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to pull my needle through just a little piece right there. 
and I'm going to have a loop and I'm going to pull my needle through that loop and make a tiny knot. Then I'm going to put the needle under, go through my batting. You're not going to see that knot because you're pulling it through and then you're going to snip this and it's going to fall right back in. And that is how you do your binding. Thank you for joining us for our Ultimate Beginner Quilt series. Make sure to hashtag Ultimate Beginner Quilt so I can see your quilts. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more beginner-friendly quilts. See you next time.